I'm going to set this here. Hopefully it follows me. Okay, so I'm going to run through. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, what we're going to do, this is going to be kind of a short one, but that's because I want the next video to stand alone as we frame the exterior walls. As you can see, we have a walkout basement. This is actually a split level home. We've got multiple steps. So here's the first step in us shooting control points. I've set up the Stabila LAR 350. And what I'm doing is I'm checking my walls. All of our mud sill has been fastened and then bolted down using the strong tie Titans. So I, I, I meant to go from each corner in the back and then roughly spit it, spit it, split it into quarters. Now, the reason I do that is so that then I can check off of my mud sill, write the measurement down from the top to my control point. That laser is throwing out a perfectly level line. And I want to know if the top of my wall mimics that cold joint, which, by the way, will be a future video. Because there's a story to tell there. Once I see what the average is, that's going to tell me what I need to shoot on my studs, which is really what this video is all about. By the way, I was plus or minus a 16th all the way across. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. If you put one of these studs at every corner, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm gonna go grab seven and eight. Just like laying down or stand up? Just um, lay them down. Okay. And be careful on this side, the sawhorse isn't quite far enough back. So I would grab them off that side just so they get used up. What we're doing is we're putting a two by six at every outside corner. And then you'll see, we're gonna go ahead and hold those vertically and we're gonna put a laser line on those. I like to just go ahead and get them all scattered. Then I can stay in rhythm with the laser. Also, I have a limited amount of time for the drone battery, so. Yeah, I, yes, I think so. I was taught this method way back in the early 90s, except we used a builder's level. So you leveled it and somebody looked through it, it had crosshairs. Then the framer that's out there like I am, he would put his tape measure on the board and then I would read off. Let's just say it's like 49 and an eighth. That's what he would mark. And we'd work our way all the way around the foundation. Right over here. Okay, so what I'm doing, Noah, just so you know, is if I set it right here, uh, let's see here. I think I'm gonna do here. My block and the laser. God, all of this stuff. I changed where I decided to put that two by six because I have two by mud sill. But then for the shear walls, I have three by mud cell. I got it. Thank you, though. Okay. So what I do is I mark where the laser is good. Then I always circle it and I draw an arrow up so I don't lose track of which side's up and down. Smart. Then I'm going to lay it here. Whenever I use techniques like this, I'm reminded of just what great framers I've had the privilege of working with. And we're gonna stay off of the mud sill. We're gonna go down to this guy. Yep. I would like to point out that the stud does not have to be perfectly plumb. We've actually tested this. We put a mark on it, just like I'm doing there, and then we held it up perfect with a level and checked the mark, and it was right on the money, so you just can eyeball. Okay. If you're and within an inch of plumb, you're fine. It'll work out. And if you don't believe set me, this aside, go try it. Go try it. This one you still need? Yeah, and the reason is, is because, um, let's go, that's going to go all the way through this guy. 
Let's go just like that. Okay, so let me mark it here. Arrow up. That one's good. Now, I think on the very last one, Nolan, just be careful that you don't walk on any of the tools. Let's go right on the outside, even, like it's a stud. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then just hold it as plumb as you can. Okay. Arrow up. That one is good. This guy. Um, yeah, I don't like that mud cell. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, don't like that. How do I want to do this? Yeah, that's good enough. I'll just hold a plumb. Okay. Now on this last one, let me grab this other camera. Yeah, let me just see if this guy's still, hey, it's still following me. No, no, leave that one up there. Sorry, Noah. I think actually, basically I'm just gonna show it kind of, but not really up close, close. So if you just kind of stay your six feet back yeah. and just press the top button and just make sure you're not blocking the laser. Okay. Solid tone means one of two things. One, that you're perfectly level. Or two, someone has missile lock, it's time to pop flares, hit the afterburners, and get out of there. Uh, Ghost Rider, negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Okay. That's 80s reference. All right, now we can't lose any of these. So, okay, so on this house, we have eight foot walls. We're gonna build pony walls but our height is 100% dependent on our garage door height. So I've gone around at all the corners and I've shot and I've marked with my laser, that's control point, but I need to get my wall height now at the garage opening. So I need a control point here, that's that guy. Then what I did is I went through and I story pulled it. Okay, so here's my control point. That line is at every single corner of the house shot with the laser. I should mention real quick that when I held that stud in place at the garage opening, that left-hand side of the stud, that was sitting on the concrete. And that's where I want to measure my garage door opening from. That's going to determine the height of my pony walls for the rest of the house. What I, what I need is I need an eight foot garage door opening plus one inch of trim. So there's eight foot plus my one inch of trim. So that's 97 inches. My uh, LVL is 16 inches. I'm only gonna put one top plate on it. There's no point in paying for any extra lumber. It's not gonna make it any stronger. So 16 inches of height, plus inch and a half for the double top plate, then minus inch and a half for the first top plate. So what I want, so here's top of wall, minus two plates. This is top of stud. Now all I have to do is measure from my control point to this guy. I'm gonna put that right on the control point. So 63 and 1 16th is the number that I want above all of my control points. And what I went ahead and did is I marked it on the concrete. So here's one of my studs on a corner. Here's my control point. I put the laser away. So what I did is I marked with the laser where it's, where it's a level line. Now I'm gonna go 63631 and cut that off. So here's my control point. 
I'm going to go 63, 6, 3, and 1. 63, 1. That is the top of my stud on this particular corner. Okay, I'm going to go and do this at every single corner, and now the tops will all be perfect. I don't think we're going to use that. So here, I'm just going to work this as I go. Put it right on my pencil line. Six three sixty three one. Three, one. 